Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. With the Premier League season coming to its final weeks, the discussion about who deserves the PFA Player of the Year is gonna amp up. We've been debating about it all season. Would it be Kevin De Bruyne? Would it be Harry Kane? Would it be Mo Salah? Would it be David Silva? Would it be Fernandinho? All of these players deserve credit, but this weekend, Liverpool, Mo Salah stole the headlines in the Premier League. He was the main difference in their win. Yes, it was against Watford, but in the aspect of scoring four goals, he's really making a case as to why he possibly is the best player in the Premier League this season. Do you think he is? Do you think he's not? Don't worry, here are the interviews we've got you covered. So on this edition of interviews, we're going to briefly break down why Mo Salah is such a devastating attacker. So one of the major storylines in European football this weekend featured Mo Salah's four-goal performance against Watford in a 5-0 win for Liverpool. When you look at the season and you judge it, if there wasn't Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, or Harry Kane, you would obviously give the PFA Player of the Year award to Mo Salah. But on this occasion, it's up for grabs. He's one of the most coveted players in Europe based on these performances. And it's crazy because he is three goals away from smashing the Premier League goal record that's set at 31. Mo Salah didn't have the best game against Watford from an all-round performance, but it was a performance that proved that he's growing as an elite forward in world football. You look at it and you look at his career in the past, you would think of him at his time at Chelsea to be a failure. Jose Mourinho didn't really give him a chance after shining at Basel. He never really trusted him, so that didn't work out well. He proved his worth at Fiorentina and Roma, but there's always questions about Mo Salah. Was he just a counter-attacking speedster? Was he able to give you reliability around the penalty box in the Premier League? This was a chance for the second coming. A chance to live at Liverpool would give him the opportunity to prove that he deserves to be amongst the great Premier League players and that's what we thought when he joined Chelsea. At Liverpool he's done that. This performance against Watford all round wasn't the greatest but in terms of his production in the penalty box it showed that he offers so many different ways to harm the opposition. We look at the board, Liverpool in the red, Watford in the blue, Watford playing in a 3-4-3 that at times looked like a 5-3 5-2-3 and on the other occasion we look at Liverpool 4-3-3 up front, Salah, Firmino, Mane, different roles here. Obviously each player was pivotal to the goals. Salah scored four, he created one. Let's break that down. What did Mo Salah do right? What was the difference maker here? You look at the first goal, his ability to dribble at you, and it also highlighted Mane's performance. Uh, obviously, Mane started on the left, but for the build-up to the goal, he was in the center position. What he did was he dropped deep, he dragged Mariapa, no, he didn't drag Pritos with him, he dragged Mariapa with him because he drifted into that zone. What he did, he held up the ball well, played it out wide to Salah. At this position, you look at him, he's running at Pritos. Proto comes over. Mo Salah, you think of him, you think of the goals he scored this season. There was one with his back to goal. He just turned his marker and curled it. So you're assuming that he's going to cut curl in and cut in and try and curl his effort past the keeper. What Mo Salah does is that he runs at him, cuts, and he drags Brito's one away and then drags it back inside the box. Proto and Brito's are mystified. They don't know what to do. They get bamboozled one way. Salah finishes superbly at the near post. one nothing Liverpool. A great goal showing that this is what he can do. He could run at you and harm you, whether it be one defender or two. That's what Mo Salah does. Some wide play, although he was from a narrow position. That is key to a player playing on the right side of the pitch. So that's one nothing. You look, we'll get these guys back into their shape. We look at the second opportunity that Mo Salah gets, totally different than the first one. This one's more from a counterattack. We'll push these guys out. It was more 2v2. What happens is that James Milner wins the ball in his zone, clips a ball into the left channel. Salah with his speed runs onto it. Defender's obviously dragged out there. He spots Firmino's run. Firmino is running towards the box. Salah sizes up his defender, plays the ball into Firmino. The marker comes in. Firmino gains a yard on his marker, forces the keeper into a save. But just like that, within seconds, Salah breaks on the counter attack. You expect Mane to be there, but Firmino is no slouch. He could keep up with these two speedsters and he does 
possibly should score, but he tested the keeper, and that's what's so pivotal. And Liverpool get another opportunity. Like we said throughout the game, Salah got into good positions throughout, in the channels, in the wide areas as well around the box but his passing was a bit off they were a bit sloppy Liverpool in open play but the second goal shows a different element to Salah's game and it's the poaching ability what he could do around the box some center forward play for you and what we see there is that we'll get these guys back into their positions and what we have here is we have Robertson pushing forward. A key element to Liverpool's um, evolution this season offers so much in terms of being a left back that could deliver quality balls into the box. And what happened here was again, it's Mane drifting into a center position. He combines with Robertson, plays the ball into him. He's able to get out wide and it's Salah running across. He's got two markers there. He runs across, super ball delivered into the six-yard box. He runs across Britos, taps it in. Salah oh, being aware of the cross coming into the box, beating his marker to it, who was ball watching, taps it in from point blank range. 2-0 Liverpool going to the half, and you know at Anfield, they're cruise and cruise control from there. We go to the second half. It's Salah again. Just beautiful play. We get it. Get these guys back into position, left back there. And what it is, it highlights another element to Liverpool's play over the past few weeks, where Mane has been more of a dropping deep distributor, still scoring goals, and Salah offering his brilliance. Firmino has been less of a false nine per se. He can drag you out of position. He does still have that arsenal to his game, but he's offered more of a center forward number nine trait this season, especially over the past few weeks, where he's getting onto the end of crosses. He's finishing balls around the box, and we saw that here. What happens now is that Salah Salah is able to pick up the ball in a narrow position on the left. He spins Britos the other way. Britos had a nightmare of a game. Runs into the box, locates Firmino's run to the near post. Firmino runs to the near post, a superb back heel to the far post. 3 nothing Liverpool, but again, it's Salah not taking up the wide position. Going man for man, and unlike the previous week where Ashley Young was tight to him throughout, Britos gives him space to receive the ball. He's able to beat him on the turn, run outside because he has the pace to do the extra running. Firmino, again, locates the run across the defense. And we saw this last week with Watford. They were good going forward against Arsenal, but defensively, they switch off. The midfield make mistakes. Decore and Kapu just couldn't really get the job done. And there you go, 3-0. But Salah's night isn't done. It was just getting started. The hat-trick goal was the best of the bunch. Something similar happens there again. This time, it's Mane making that run and it's what happens is that proto's near him he spins him as well spins proto would get some players back here because they were all involved as well what proto does very well is that he recovers his run and he gets back into the box but he pulls it back for salah at the edge and salah has three defenders with him at this position you don't think he's going to score he isolates decore he cuts in he cuts outside then cuts back inside, then gains the yard. He has three markers there around him, and he's able to squeeze the shot past the keeper. He had Kapu there, Decore, Proto recovering. It didn't matter. Three defenders on him. The commentators compared him to Messi. A bit of a stretch. Superb finish. The keeper probably should save it. But again, just showing the confidence to be able to have three markers on you, to dribble past them, to poke your upper past the keeper. That's a superb goal from Salah, well-deserved, and it just goes to show what he does. The, the defenders don't want to make a tackle on him. They don't want to step in because they fear they're going to be beat. He scores again. And then, obviously, changes are made throughout the game. We'll get the midfielders back into their position there. We'll get the forwards back here, the center backs there. Center backs had an awful night, to say the least. Proto, Britos, Mariapa all pulled out of position. The last goal, it's just a combination between the two of Mane and of. I mean, of Salah, he slides the ball into Ings, and what happens is that the run from Mane pulls Mariapa with him, and then Ings is able to get onto the ball. 
Ings gets played in, forces a save from the keeper, but who is there to pounce on it? It's Salah again. The first goal is a center forward play. The last goal, more of a poacher's play. So in all the four goals, or even the third goal, we get great, or the goal for Firmino, we get wing play for the first one. The second one, he operates more as a number nine, taps the ball into the net. The goal for... Um, for Mino, he just shows that he could play that wide area, he could play in central areas, find the pockets of space, create his own space by beating a man 1v1, delivering the cross into the box. The third goal shows his overall brilliance, the ability to win a match on your own. That's a goal that you could add a nothing, create something. That's pivotal. That's what great players do. And the fourth goal, again, the poaching ability to be able to be aware, to know that the ball may slip, to have that striker's instinct to attack the ball and no matter what, whether the keeper has it or not, but just to be alert, he taps it in. Mo Salah, four goals, slowly rising amongst the cream of the crop. A superb season. You can't bet against them to break the record. Three goals with little under, probably seven games to go in the Premier League for Liverpool. He should break the record. A tremendous return to the Premier League. First season at Liverpool. Probably one of the better seasons or the best season, arguably, as a Liverpool player in the history of the club. And it goes to show that when given an opportunity under a new system, Mo Salah proves that anything can happen. And as he's slowly evolving to a top class and maybe eventually becoming a world-class player, that performance shows how you could be a devastating attacker by doing things and various aspects of an attacking role and Mo Salah covered it. But let me know what you guys think. Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.